Question number one, which is during the game with the ball in play, a substitute throws a water bottle in a reckless manner at their opponent who is stood on the field. The opponent, however, sees what's happening and takes evasive action to make sure that uh, they're not hit by the bottle. What should the referee do next? We have three options. Do we stop the game, award a indirect free kick and caution the sub? Do we do option two? We stop the game and award a direct free kick and caution the sub. Or do we stop the game here and award a direct free kick but send off the sub? So, correct answer, option two, we stop the game. We award a direct free kick because it's a, a physical uh, offence and we show a yellow card. Apologies for anyone who's seen this before, but this is just uh, for me to justify my use and terminology of the word athlete throughout the rest of this presentation, which is that when we look at average total distance covered, and you can choose obviously different metric, but when we look at the, the distance covered by keepers and outfield players, it is actually on average less than what a referee will cover in a 90 minute match. Challenge mindset is something that we want our participants to achieve, whether that be a player, whether it be a coach, whether that be a match official. So we want someone to experience a challenge mindset and a challenge mindset has certain positive emotional and behavioral outcomes. So someone that experiences a challenge mindset, for instance, they're much more likely to persist. They're much more likely to experience patience. They're much more likely to strategize in their free time about what it is they want to do and how they're going to achieve it. Now, if we're coach educators, if we're referee trainers, if we're referees ourselves, we want to exhibit those behaviours because those behaviours, by extension, will promote success. So, of course, it's not a guarantee of success. Of course, mistakes will still happen, but it minimises the likelihood of those happening. So challenge mindset is what we want. You know, so modern, modern refereeing, game management is a topic that we hear about more and more at seminars. So... When I started to referee football matches a long, long time ago, we went to seminars and we focused on the 17 laws of the game and we didn't have all the, uh, the development material, the clips from matches, et cetera, et cetera, that is a huge part of referee development and education now. But we never talked about the things that are part of so many courses uh, in the modern game. Um, so modern referees have to focus on developing skills uh, to understand the game. And we hear a lot now about football understanding. Uh, for example, the competition you're playing in, is it a league, is it a cup? The tactics of the teams, do you understand how they play? During the taking of a corner kick before play has restarted, a spectator runs onto the field of play and kicks the ball. This is, of course, quite topical at the moment. We have a number of fans um, running onto the playing area, interfering with play, interfering with the players. But without thinking here, the player taking the corner kick runs after the spectator and in an act of brutality, strikes the spectator to the floor so that the stewards can help. What should the referee do next? Does the referee ensure that the spectator leaves the field of play and the game's then restarted with the corner kick? Do the Referees here ensure that the spectator is removed and caution the player and show a yellow card? Or does the referee ensure that the spectator is removed, sends off the player and restarts with the corner? Excellent. So, of Just course, as we've heard here, the correct answer, option number three, the referee ensures that the spectator is removed, yeah. sends off the player for violent conduct and restarts with corner kick this is this is sort of a directed bit in terms of the bit more seriousness in terms of when we're looking at um, energy intake now i've mentioned about the periodized approach and how we'd advise you know in the 36 to 24 hours uh, leading up to to a match or an intense training session you'd want to have carbohydrate a complex carbohydrate every meal to ensure you have adequate energy availability but what we know uh, in in athletes and in footballers and more and more in, in female footballers, which I'm seeing firsthand, is that often uh, will present with what we call low energy availability. And of course, it affects all um, ages and, and sexes. Um, but what it basically is, is, is a chronic underfueling. Um, and I'll show that, that this is basically the, the risk factors here. Again, you can have a, a copy of this slide to read in your own time. But basically, um, that there are risk factors, whether they're unintentional, 
maybe just training up really hard and, and under eating and not realizing that you are. Um, maybe there's, you know, the intentional misguided intention. So this is the kind of idea that perhaps you just want to, to lean up a bit. You feel better if you lost a bit of weight and, and therefore, you know, you, you are undertaking those sort of strategies. Um, and then it gets a little bit more severe where it's a bit more compulsive and people start to develop, excuse me, um, you know, either uh, disordered eating or eating disorders where it becomes a lot more of a, a psychological thing than a physical thing. Um, and as you can see, what happens here is that your, your exercise, your health functions, your daily living um, outweighs your dietary intake. And this is what leads to uh, an impairment of a number of processes, which I'll show you on the next slide. Um, and these are those you can, uh, I won't go through them all again. You can read them in your own time. But the point is that if you are chronically under fueling and over training, you can have a number of serious issues. Um, I say this is something that affects female athletes more than male athletes, but this is what used to be called uh, or known as the female athlete triad. And then it was reclassified once it, there was an understanding that first of all, it affected males as well as females. And there were more than four sort of um, ramifications for being in low energy availability. So uh, have a look at those, uh, say in your own time and see if any of those are things that maybe you suffer with as well. And it, it's a very important thing and it's becoming more and more prevalent. Um, I'm not sure if that's because of increased awareness of um, low energy availability, which is also known as REDS, which is relative energy deficiency in sports. So you'll often hear it called REDS. Um, and I'll show that on that previous slide. So that's, that's what that is. Um, you know, and it is something that's very serious um, and it, the, there can be long term consequences of being in REDS, particularly with people who um, undertake low energy availability sort of processes, particularly in their, their adolescence or few through their pubescent stages. We know that it's very serious. Now, we can contrast that to a threat mindset. Now, a threat mindset is where we will experience the opposite of those things. So we are less likely to persist. We are less likely to put effort in. When we put effort in, we're less likely to direct it into areas that are, by extension, likely to improve our performance. Strong, clear, confident whistle, the same as you're signaling, um, is, is, is a valuable tool to have. It gives you presence. The players know you're around. The players know you mean business if you use this with authority. Yellow and red cards, of course, are also tools that we have. But again, make sure that you show these in a correct manner in a comfortable way, not in an arrogant way, not in a dismissive way. Um, keeping in modern language a social distance from the players is also important. So don't get too close to the player when you display the card especially if you're quite a tall referee and maybe the player is small or the reverse of that, uh, a tall player and a referee who maybe hasn't got a tall, a tall stature.